Welcome traders to this week's live market trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. We're going to get started here in just another 30 seconds. Just to we'll do a quick mic check, if you can hear me loud and clear, if you can type a Y into the chat box, please. Thanks, Noel. <clears throat> Okay, 1 p.m. British summer time. Let's get this show on the road. Before we jump into presentation, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly, with respect to today's presentation, the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Those of you here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight. I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that time, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down basically giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly, though, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process oriented. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process oriented and you have a professional trading mindset and you truly accept and understand the nature of trading being a numbers game in which we're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment in that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering positive annual returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell clients. Provides an in-depth daily market outlook breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos, and these are shared through the Ticknell Trading View accounts. And I'll post a link for that uh, at the end of the presentation so you can uh, follow along. I also run Ticknell's rapidly growing e-mini strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily trade plan, uh, giving uh, the pre-market trading conditions for the cash trading session in New York for the S&P 500 or the e-mini futures. I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 2,500 points in profits since we launched the group. Second Ticknell strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Ticknell Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment 
where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the cash session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions will act as a platform, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. OK, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Um, let's jump into the charts. We're going to do something a bit different today. There are a bunch of um, opportunities that are close to fruition, and these are predominantly on the four hour charts. So we're going to walk through the, the setups that I'm uh, tracking that I think will probably give trade uh, trading opportunities uh, potentially today or, or tomorrow, uh, depending upon how the price action unfolds. So we're going to start here on a four hour chart of the S&P 500. I'm obviously using the E-mini futures contract. And what we're tracking is this big corrective pattern uh, versus the swing structure we have in place here with the swing low at 37.23. I'm looking for a test of 40.33. From here, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns as an opportunity to engage on the short side, looking for the next leg down in what I believe is a bear market that we're currently trading in. So there are a couple of opportunities for me that I'm tracking today. Any pullback into this trend line support and the high volume mode. So anything into 39.19, I'm going to be watching for bullish reversal patterns. Now, I'm obviously using the four hour chart here, but you can, depending upon the, your time frame of choice and how, uh, how you like to make your trading decisions, you could, get the, you, you could break this down into a 15 minute chart. And all you'd be looking for is as we trade into this area would be a bullish reversal candle uh, to engage on the long side. So that's just to give you a sense. I'm going to continue on the four hour charts with the rest of these, um, with the rest of the analysis. But I just want to show you that you can use these areas, these levels I'm providing on shorter time frames, if you like, to try and uh, reduce that, uh, the risk parameters. But um, certainly also tradable in the four hour time frame as well, because there's ample scope here in terms of moves. So if we get this pullback into 39.20, 39.19 area, the target on the upside is 40.33. So there's plenty of upside there to play for. Um, so in terms of framing the trade here, let's just put in some, uh, some parameters. So we'd be looking for something, uh, we'd be looking for a reversal in this area. And then we have our target up here at the 40.33. So you can see, um, depending upon how you, some people will just trade the, the, the strike of the level, um, depending upon your, again, your risk profile. But even if you're playing the reversal from this area, like I said, 107 points of upside to play for. So you can allow, I guess it comes down to um, personal choice in terms of some traders will prefer to take price risk, i.e. taking the strike of the level and using tighter stops. Other traders prefer to take information risk or confirmation risk. And that means waiting for a bullish reversal candle on your chosen time frame to engage on the long side. This is the trade I'm looking for uh, today to play for that pullback and extension to the upside. Similar setup in the NASDAQ. Um, we are trading just below the equality objective with the NASDAQ here. So this gives me a couple of scenarios to think about. Firstly, any move up directly into this area, I'm going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. We have the weekly R1 there as well. It's a nice level to, uh, to play against. What I want to see is this momentum, di oops, I want to see this momentum divergence maintained to, uh, to encourage that, that short setup. The alternative scenario here is we get a pullback into trend line support here. Uh, 12,274, and we will be looking then for that upside extension to complete this sequence before, <clears throat> again, then looking for bearish reversal patterns. So let me just draw in the setup area here. And we use the daily uh, range, projected range support as our invalidation level, and then we're trading up into, uh, into the target zone here. So again, you can see with this trade, there's potentially 100 points of risk on the table there, but the target gives us four to one upside in terms of the upside objective. So uh, again, getting those risk reward param parameters correct 
to ensure the uh, longevity of our trading accounts. YM, now YM sitting right at the trend line support. So there's a trade developing potentially here now. So what I'd be looking for, any move back through these highs, there's a protected stop just below the low there. And our target, the initial target on this, well, this is the equality objective. So by the time, if, if this trade plays out, we get this move back through uh, 31,945, uh, 31, let's say, uh, if that plays out, then the first area where I would be either looking to scale out of some of the position or get my stops to entry will be the test of the equality objective. We also have weekly projected range resistance, 32,340, and daily projected range resistance there. So that's going to be a key test um, for the YM because that could complete this correction and we could be rolling back over again. The alternative scenario is we extend higher and test into the R1 there up to 32,840. But like I say, pay close attention to how we trade in this area because this could define the next leg to the downside. So I'm gonna be watching there. And again, if we get bearish reversal patterns there, then I'll certainly be looking to engage on the short side. But the initial setup here is we're testing the trend line support and we've got, uh, <coughs> we're holding at the moment. So an outside reversal back through these highs would encourage long positions for now. Russell. Russell is also sitting at its equality objective. Now, what we kind of want to see with these, it's certainly, to my mind anyway, um, the S&P is, is the benchmark, it's the benchmark for global equity risk. So I would, although obviously the Russell is testing the equality objective, NASDAQ is close to it, the YM is close to it as well. We have still got that scope in terms of the uh, the S&P for another 100 points. So I would anticipate what we see here is the Russell. I was looking, I posted this chart yesterday uh, on the TradingView account. Um, we have tested into, so what I'd look for is a pullback now into the trend line support. And if that coincides with the S&P pulling back into its trend line support, the YM and the, uh, and the NASDAQ doing the same, then we're going to get the same trade set up here. And we would be looking for this scenario to uh, to play out. So let's just draw in where we can anticipate some action here. Again, we'll use that daily projected range support to give us a stop parameter, and then we're trading up into this target zone. So that's what I'm watching for in the Russell. Obviously, if um, if we take out the trend line support. And that's e equally, that then gives us um, additional trading information. Because if we take out the trend line support, that would suggest that this correction is complete. And then we'll be watching for the first pullback against any impulse move through that trend line support. But for now, we're just focusing on the trend line test and the opportunity to engage on the long side. DAX, I posted this in the trading view account. We have this bull flag, I was looking for a break and we've traded into the first target on the DAX now. So you're either taking half your position off or you're moving your stops to entry. But what I'm anticipating in the DAX now is we have an inverse head and shoulder scenario developing. And so what I would anticipate is that we get a, another leg here to the downside in a three wave move, something like this. And we ultimately, actually let's see, there might be a pitchfork set up here as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we could extend here down back into uh, 12,864, but from there, I want to be looking again on the long side. I've got a target in the DAX here for a gap fill up into 13,792. So again, if we're thinking about uh, framing the trade for you guys, so you can see a visual representation of what I'm thinking. Oops, that's not it. So there's the setup. <clears throat> now, once we trade into this area, we could consolidate and then test the high volume node. So this not, I wouldn't necessarily take the trade off here if it sets up. I'd be monitoring the price action, rolling up stops, and actually playing for the, uh, the high volume nodes at 30, just below 14,000 on the DAX. Moving to the foreign exchange, we have the dollar, we've got the ECB decision coming out uh, in any minute now, actually. Um, what I'm looking for in the dollar is we, uh, 
I, I'm viewing this as the first leg of a corrective move in terms of the dollar index. So I'm, in terms of the, the, the principle, I'm looking for three corrective waves to play out for those uh, Elliott wave uh, followers. It's that ABC pattern or a WXY, a double correction. Um, so what we're looking for here now in the dollar, so we're going to call this an impulsive move to the downside. So that's the first leg. Now we could correct in a three wave pattern potentially. And then we're looking for another leg to the downside. Now, importantly, if this sets up, this test of the trend line is going to be key. If we break, then we're looking for that uh, high volume node coming in at 104.90 is the, uh, would be the first target on the downside. So again, let me just draw in what I'm thinking about here. Um, yeah, actually, I can let's use this tool to give read on it. So we're looking for a three-wave corrective move versus this current swing structure that we've got in place, which gives us a test 107.55. That's going to be the area where we're going to be looking for short positions. And we use the 161 extension as our invalidation point. First target is going to be the trend line. Even at that stage, trade potentially gives a three to one risk reward. But ideally, then we're looking for that high volume node and that sets up with a four to one risk reward in terms of the setup. So that's uh, that's one that's certainly on watch. ECB has raised rates by 50 basis points in July monetary policy decision. So let's check in. This is a good time to check with the euro. OK. I was looking in the euro for a three wave corrective move into test uh, 10118. I uh, don't know if we're going to see that now. We may still may still set up. But ultimately, what I'm looking for in the euro is a test of this uh, prior support zone before the breakdown to now act as resistance. So I'm looking for 103.50s as the uh, as the key area, and I'm looking for uh, bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. And um, and certainly, what I'd be thinking about would be a retest of the. Let's just draw this in. We get up into this area, the minimum target will be a 50% retracement versus that area. So again, thinking in terms, always want to be thinking in terms of the risk reward parameters for, uh, for the setups. The, for, no, sorry, not for the setup, for the actual trade. The, you know, the, the, there, are plenty, there are setups coming all the time. But what you've got to do is you've got to learn to pick the, the setups that give the best risk reward parameters in terms of um, your account. So in terms of this setup here, we have an invalidation point there. So even just even if we trade just that 50% retracement, that's still a 2.3 to 1 risk reward. And you could probably get that stop a bit tighter actually, but got to see how we trade when we test that area. But if, if we get up in there and we get uh, rejection, then we will be looking on the short side in terms of the euro dollar. Sterling, Sterling is just testing a support area. We have actually just come shy of it. So what I'm always looking for, just so you can visually see, are these three-way corrective moves. So we've got it there, we've tested the equality objective. Now, if we can get a reversal here, a bullish reversal, then we want to be in on the long side and the initial target for this move, which I deem to be a corrective move for now, will be an equality objective versus the swing structure. So that gives us a target now of 121.89. And just above there, we have trend line resistance. But that's going to be our first objective. And our invalidation point is going to be the 118.48. So again, ample opportunity here in terms of 4.23 uh, to 1 risk return. So I mean, this, this is, these are the type of setups you really want to be tracking for. And, uh, and this one may develop into the, uh, into the next four hour close here. Dollar yen. I am looking for the dollar yen to pull back here. We have this first leg to the downside. We have a th potential three wave corrective move here. So I'm looking for the dollar yen to test into 136.90s. And from there, I'm going to be looking to engage on the long side. And I've got a first stop up to the upside at 140. Um, and again, we can tighten that to use the high volume node to lean against 
Um, so again, 3.6 to one risk reward uh, in that setup. You can see as well that in terms of the uh, in terms of the the setups uh, with respect to these risk reward parameters, you, you don't you only need to be right four out of ten times to be a profitable trader using this type of uh, risk reward parameters and strategy. Um, so you know it, it does it, it takes away like I was saying at the beginning. Once you have that professional trading mindset and you, you just fully accept that you're you're playing the probabilities um, and you, you release that fear of one fear of missing out or fear of loss and you actually just start trading the market and focus more upon your, your risk reward ratios then this becomes an infinitely easier game uh, what have we got here yeah the Aussie yen potentially here so again we're looking for a pullback here into uh, 9488 as an opportunity to engage on the long side and the target for that move is going to be up into these prior highs here uh, giving us the and the weekly projected range resistance 9660s is the uh, is the target there on that Aussie yen kiwi yen also just to, just short of our, our target zone, but any pullback now into this trend line support again. I'm looking for an upside extension back into range resistance here, uh, 86 79s. We've got monthly projected range resistance and weekly projected range resistance just above. So again, we check our risk reward parameters. We can probably look at tightening that and use the 131 extension as the stop there. So that can give us a six to one risk reward uh, for that setup. Aussie, let's check in there. Aussie testing its equality objective here. So if we get a bullish reversal here, then I'm going to be looking to, uh, to be long the Aussie. And what we look for here will be a move up into the value area high as the first target. And then that 170 should act as a magnet and a pivot. So let's just frame this up. So we'll see if we can get, ideally you want to see it close here, back through the 50% retracement of that last candle. But uh, we'll see how that plays out at the close of the candle. And again, the risk reward you can get on that, 3.3 to one risk reward. Kiwi, yeah, uh, Kiwi dollar testing its equality objective. Uh, zoom screen. In a second. Is that better? Can everyone see the screen? Why in the chat box? Uh, not sure what I can do about that. Um, I'm, I'm giving. I'm, I'm calling the levels anyway. But the, the top test here was this swing structure giving us the 61.83. So we're watching for bullish reversal pattern here. And again, we'll be looking on the long side. Let me see. If... And targeting a move up into the 63.30s would be the objective there. So we want to get a close really back through the value area high here to engage on the long side, looking for a break of the trend line resistance. And then the first stop, the first target will be the uh, weekly projected range resistance 62.81 is the key area. By that stage, certainly you're either taking half your position off or you're um, moving your stops to entry. Gold. Now, gold is setting up a very interesting uh, scenario here. Let me just pull up the. Uh, where are we? Let me show you this on another chart quickly, so you can see this is this is the level I've been waiting for gold to test. We're just shy of that sixteen sixty three. So that's the equality objective versus the swing structure here and here. So that gives us that target zone. Um, so going back to the uh, trading time frame, so we're potentially going to get an outside reversal here. We've got momentum divergence, which is active. 
So gold could give us an opportunity on the long side. Let's draw this in. And this, uh, this gold trade is, is something I would actually be looking to, uh, to hold as a position trade. So I wouldn't necessarily be looking to, uh, to an, a, a, an initial target really. What I'd be doing is scaling into this position to hold it for a longer, uh, a longer term trade because this could, this could be completing a very significant uh, corrective pattern on that weekly time frame that could see gold potentially trading to new highs over the coming months. So this would be one that I'm going to be monitoring as a position trade. Uh, equally, we have the gold miners, the GDX. Uh, they're also uh, setting up as well. And if we can get uh, can we get this reversal going today in terms of gold in, in the metal, we'll anticipate we'll see a reversal in the miners. And again, there's ample opportunity on the upside. So I'm going to be thinking about longs back through 2640. Let me draw uh, in for you. This is the ETF uh, GDX, and we'd be using the lows as our stop, but I wouldn't be using a target as such because I'd, I'd be anticipating a, a very significant uh, reversal. We've got some big cycles in play in terms of gold and the gold miners, uh, 60 and 90 year GAN cycles. Um, so there's a, I see a potentially significant opportunity in gold and the gold miners. Uh, let's check in with crude oil. No immediate. Well, we have actually got potential inverse head and shoulders here in terms of crude. So let's see what we can do. Really, we'd want to see a reversal back through the highs of this candle uh, to engage in terms of crude. So there isn't a setup for me there at the moment that will work from a, a risk reward perspective. And this is, what I, this is what I mean. Although there's a pattern there, a potential pattern of an inverse head and shoulders, I can't, the risk reward doesn't, doesn't match my, my profile, so I just pass on the trade. Bitcoin coming in to test the trend line support here, 22,348. So this could be interesting. If we, uh, if we get a hold here and a bullish reversal, then uh, I can see an opportunity in terms of Bitcoin. Uh, let's see, let me use, use that value area high. And initially, what I'd be looking for would be 25,000 as the next upside objective there. So let me just draw it in for you. So any move that holds and that tests and holds the trendline support, then we're looking for a move up into 25,000 as the next upside objective. So again, nice four to one risk reward ratio there in terms of Bitcoin. And that uh, um, concludes the, uh, the setups that I'm tracking at the moment anyway. I hope, uh, I hope that's been useful for you. Um, there are certainly a number of opportunities here that are very close to fruition. What I'll do is I'm gonna post uh, a couple of links into the chat here. One is for the, uh, the Tickmill Futures Group. If you want to join that, uh, you just send a request and I'll add you into that group and you get that daily trade plan. Uh, for the S&P 500 or the E-mini futures. I also post a bunch of other setups and institutional uh, research in there. And the other thing I would post is the trading view accounts. You can follow along. I post setups in there daily, uh, three to five opportunities that I'm actively tracking. So with that said, are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is, uh, is useful. So I know I've done a, uh, a reasonable job of explaining things. Would anyone like me to take a look at an instrument that I haven't covered in the presentation and just type it into the chat box and I'll pull up the chart and see if there's, uh, if there's anything setting up. Okay, can't see anything coming through at the moment. Okay, guys, well, look, I'm going to wrap this session up here. Hope to see some of you join the, uh, the Facebook group, uh, receive my daily S&P 500 trade plan, and um, we will reconvene at the same time next week. And as always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much. <laughs>